The craziest thing to me about Furia beating Na'Vi at IEM Rio isn't that Furia beat Na'Vi, and it's not that Furia, on a map they're one in eight in the last few months on, managed to beat Na'Vi, who's probably the best Mirage team in the world. No, that's not the craziest part. The craziest part is that Furia looked like a really good team, and Na'Vi didn't look like they just didn't show up. I mean, this is kind of like the heroic EG meme, where it's like, all the analysts can say is that heroic didn't show up. Not that we we built uh, from the ground up uh, a talent system. Fury actually looks fucking good, dude. They look good. And not only that, but they look like they've actually done some s really solid anti-stratting. For example, one of the main plays that Na'Vi make on their four spy rounds on T-side, and this is where a lot of teams, if you're, if you're in a team, I don't know why you'd be watching this, but if you are, a lot of teams are very readable, have very few four spy plays, they have very few anti-eco plays. And I'm not saying that Na'Vi are like insanely imbalanced, but Furia, they go for a fast boost up into apartments, they try and deal with this specifically. And then of course, look, they're, Furia hit some nice shots, right? You have to accept that some of it is that Furia hit some nice shots and Na'Vi miss a few shots, but Furia just overall look insanely impressive in this series, in this game especially, and Na'Vi, they didn't look terrible. I really don't think Na'Vi looked fundamentally that bad. So you see Na'Vi lose 13-4. You're expecting them to start out like really, really terribly, not get any chances into the game. That's kind of the expectation, but that's not necessarily what exactly happens because although they lost the first force buy, they go for kind of a semi-force here. They have JL saved armor in the previous rounds when he buys up an AK here, which puts them in a bit of a weird money situation if they lose this, but they've got a pretty good idea of what they want to do. Really well-timed Molly by Cello there to actually stop this play right in its tracks. And then Fury are actually in a really good setup here. They've got Cello on balcony. He's got some support from Caserato, but Cello kind of whiffs there. Caserato gets a little luck unlucky on, you know, he picked a target that immediately strafed out of his vision. And then you have a 3v4, which isn't unwinnable here for Furia, but they realize that this is kind of how they give Navi a, a pretty good leg up if they give them full guns and they ruin their own economy at the same time. They can go for a pretty comfortable buy if they save here. So they actually have the discipline to go for the save and they don't have what a lot of teams have, which is that first player, I believe it was Yuri, that was already kind of peaking market doorway. He doesn't like stick around for two seconds too long and end up dying and kind of screwing things up. I've been trying recently to look into exactly what makes Navi so good on this map. And one of the things that they really are very consistent with is they simply don't lose opening kills on T side. And then they have like a ridiculous 85% win rate with 5v4. But in their last several games, there were something like 20 and six on buy versus buy opening kills, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially compared to most other teams are 50-50 or slightly below on T side. Navi just, they have a really, really strong mid control. They don't give up kills in mid almost ever. And then they can convert when they do end up in a 5v4 off of that. So Furia, as their response, I mean, Furia avoid mid a decent amount in this game. They don't try and contest Navi where Navi seem to be very strong and very consistent. And they just try and contest them a lot of the times on delayed mid control and on the outskirts like this, where they have fallen in skulls while Navi still don't yet have mid control going for this aggressive play in towards B apartments. Now, one of the reasons obviously Navi is so good is because they often find timings like this, where this is the timing when you're expecting those types of aggressions into apartments, into a ramp. And this is the timing that Navi is lurking out on you and catching players off guard. But yet again, and I think a lot of teams can take notes of how disciplined Furia is being on just saving in these rounds. Certainly not giving up any of these guns is a pretty big deal, especially since fall and has the op and I'm not sure he even shot a bullet so he might still be able to catch Navi off guard into the following round as well. So this round is a great example of why Navi is so hard to anti strap because you might try and go for the outskirts, you might try and attack the extremities against Navi, but they also have these changes of pace where it looks almost exactly like their standard mid control, but they're going with Ime having one of the better spawns, I think, going for a very fast cat play. Now this is perfectly timed as Cello is completely alone on B, but Yuri has a perfectly timed nade in this scenario to actually catch Ime with his back turn and Alexi B isn't quite at the right angle to get the trick. And that kind of gave things away and allowed Fallen with this rotate, who again, I'm not sure they've seen that op yet. So they don't have that smoke down on window that if they knew he was opping, they might've gone to smoke that window earlier. I actually really don't think they knew he was opping, which puts him in a perfect position. And none of these are really hard shots. That's a nice shot onto, a, onto JL through the bench. I mean, it's just consistent shots and being in the exact right place at the right time. 
that allow this to happen. And then the kind of crazy thing is what happens in the exact following round. So they're going to go back into the exact same setup because why not? It worked out perfectly that round. They go for a bit of a contest towards mid, but a very light contest towards mid with again, two players over towards A, ready to try and deal with what is one of Navi's scariest plays is that they like that double lurk with jail ramp and bit in towards palace. It's very hard to deal with if you're fighting over middle. Well, Fury is just saying, screw that, let's just not even fight over middle, and let's play all these passive angles. We've got Skulls jiggling with the smoke here, which is great. They've got Caserato towards stairs, and they've got Urian towards window. They actually have the op over towards B yet again, and this is where Navi are trying to attack for a majority of this half. Fury just have a really good read on what Navi want to be attacking in this game, which might be Fallen, who has been somewhat struggling recently. However, he's been picking it up in a lot of important games, and this is one of them. He's got the op in hand, he's had it for several rounds. Navi are just waiting it out. K Serato is going to be able to stop. Ime is, is, is the biggest danger, I think, on Navi on this map. Ime is incredible on Mirage, and he gets a crap load of kills in Connector on players that just aren't ready. So having Ime duel off against K Serato, I think, is kind of best case scenario, because K Serato should be able to win that on, on most occasions. Then Fallen is just in the exact right place at the right time. By the way, I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned not, real, not thinking to throw the flash through the middle of the site that's uh that's what i'm talking about and fallen just again picks up three kills this time again he's kind of in the right spot at the right time i mean he absolutely absolutely is at the right spot at the right time if he wasn't there there's a pretty high chance that navi lose this round so again individuals do obviously play a factor into this type of outcome but at the same time it's not an accident so i almost didn't bother including this round but there's a play on this round that i think is completely exemplifies what Furia is doing so effectively. So nice little nade by Yuri. This happens to me all the time too, by the way. <laughs> I thought I thought I was alone. You you throw that nade and then you fail the jump onto this onto the wood thing afterwards. So you just basically just nade directly on top of yourself. But Navi in immediately or Furia rather go for that immediate play towards middle. I'm actually not sure if uh, if Fallen's legs get spotted here. I think he saw his feet there, and in response, Alexi B actually goes for the straight up spam through, but Fallen hears that spam, and Alexi B, by the way, is very regularly completely alone at top mid, as opposed to some other teams that have, although Wonderful is here, oftentimes Wonderful plays quite far back on, on Navi's setups to throw flashes for Alexi B. Uh, I think Fallen is a little less worried about having a second player continue to spam and finish him off. He goes for the play, gets the kill, that's great, 5v4. Again, this is not something Navi typically have to play against, but it's still fine, and Navi are gonna pivot back into a pretty reasonable play. And from Furious side, they're just willing to gamble here. I mean, they've got Cello in towards ladder. They had f nobody on B, right? Absolutely nobody on B for the majority of this round. And that's kind of, I think, partially mind games. I mean, you've blown them up twice at B. Are they going to go B again? Well, maybe but maybe not through apartments in quite the same way because Fallen is playing B with the AWP, right? So it doesn't make that much sense. Now, the play that I really like, you're gonna see it from this perspective. Fallen is gonna toss a nade in to blow open the smoke for a second time this round. I believe it's already been blown open once. Then a flash is gonna pop and Cello's gonna swing. Here's the play. Navi are moving their way up catwalk, which is great. The nade bounces, drops. All three players look towards connector to try and deal with that. A flash pops at the same time and Cello swings out from Cat and doesn't get a single kill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, it's gonna happen once in a while, okay? You know, you can't can't prevent it all, right? But he, this is, I feel like, a perfect play. Nade, Nade, Flash, swinging from both Cat, having two players in Connector. This is the optimal play against exactly what Na'Vi is doing there. And they still immediately lose two players, and then it's only, like, the spam back from K Serato and Skulls that actually get them the round. They almost just immediately lose the round there. But the play is, is perfectly crafted, and that's... I feel like when I've watched Fury in the past, I've seen a few of these plays, but what I've missed out is the consistency of seeing those plays without, like round throwing failures before or after them. There was a time when, when Furia wasn't doing that, but in the last like year or two, I feel like that's kind of how it's been going. Now, not to say this is all perfect from Furia because they do lose an anti-eco, kind of a half buy out of Na'Vi. And then you just kind of have a pug play out ramp here from Na'Vi and then absolutely catches Fury off guard in terms of the timing, the play in towards connector, JL picks up a kill. I mean, in the IGL roundtable, one of the things they did talk about was explosiveness, and this is the idea, where 
Navi or Fury rather think they have a read on the timings that Navi are going for and Navi are so incredibly good at throwing off your timings and just making sure that you can't know when when Navi could be anywhere on the map. You have to respect that they could be anywhere at any time. So Fury weren't really trying to contest mid too often, but I like the idea of contesting mid on these sorts of force buys because these are the rounds where your opponents are very unlikely to have the right amount of utility to actually prevent the aggressive plays, right? They don't have enough flashes, they don't have enough smokes, they can't prevent you from taking these duels that are relatively advantageous. They also don't have the weaponry with range, right? They might have tech nines, they might have galils, right? They don't have the right range to actually deal with you in the same exact way. So this is the type of round where Furia are happy to actually be contesting it towards middle and it works perfectly, right? They catch two players that just didn't throw enough utility and then the other players are just trying to come back around and pick up some guns if they can and it catches them off guard with Case Rado picking up a nice few kills. So Navi have kind of been having a bad time in towards middle so far, right? They they haven't really been seeing a standard contest. It's been more passive from Furia and just not giving Navi any openings to get anything done. So Navi on the last round of the half, they're going to be looking for something a little bit different. But here's the problem. They're running against a double op setup. So it's pretty easy when you don't have perfect utility as Navi don't hear to get caught by just about anything from a variety of different angles. In this case, they actually run in towards all three rifles, which is probably what you want in this situation, but it is... Uh, all three rifles. <laughs> what you want to run into rather is not an off. When you run into all three rifles, you've got Yuri in towards Sandwich. They probably didn't have a molly to actually molly that out for an actual A exec. They were just trying to pug their way out A to some extent, and it's just going to get absolutely shut down. So that's an 8-4 half. And again, I mean, there was some nice plays from, from Furia. There were some nice shots landed, and Navi, a few of their players, missed a shot or two at least. However, kind of just feels like Fury were getting the better of them, and that continues into the T half. So I would say generally, I don't really care that much about the pistol, but this is Navi winning the pistol. So it's not like, again, it's not like they got run over in terms of pistols. This is, I believe, traded pistols. Yeah, this is going to be traded pistol rounds, which is what you're looking for. Uh, although Furia do get a bomb plant, so it gives them a reasonable, you know, force buy into the following round if they want. It's the gun rounds that I care about. Or rather, it's this round that I care about, where Furia are going to go for a pretty nice play. This is a play, I think Navi did something similar on their second round, maybe. But the idea here is, you don't want to give up kills in mid if you, if you don't have to. And so you kind of delay, you allow the CTs to take mid control early. And then CTs typically take mid control, then they're going to back up, leave one or two players there. Sometimes they might even be a setup like this, where there's a player looking down and a player looking up. But the idea being, let them take mid control, we'll take it back after they leave, and then we're going to set up Yuri with two smokes in towards top middle here. Now, if you look at the timing, Navi just go right back to try and contest middle themselves, right? Navi lose mid control. They're not happy with that. They know, well, Fury used a lot of utility to take that mid control. We can try and duel them and we can make sure, you know, one of the benefits T's have is they can go 5v1 or 5v2 on a bomb site. So instead, if you can fight them 5v5 in middle, that's probably a pretty decent idea. But Navi's play here is actually kind of perfect because Yuri is trying to smoke off window and connector to fake like they're coming up cat as they pop out of B apartments. However, Navi is in middle and kind of knows what's going on. But the playout B then has some decent success because it's just narrowly going to beat this rotate back over at the right timing. Now, we have to accept that this is partially, this is one of the rounds I'm talking about when I say Navi did miss some shots and Furia did hit some shots because this isn't necessarily the strat working. Yuri died at top middle. They kind of had some decent timings. It's going to get them the bomb plan. It puts them in a relatively winnable position, but at the same time, it's very possible that, you know, J towards cat could have picked up a kill on someone jumping out the window and then they just get a bomb plant and lose the round instead they're 3v4 cello hits an in insane dink there to begin with then there's the kill from skulls and they know that Ime is already dinked and they they know that there's a player or two coming up cat so they just immediately push i think that's a great idea fallen just stays alive in towards van the kill on the player in towards market puts it into a rough situation and then it gets just completely shut down from there with fallen in a good spot well actually it doesn't get completely shut down skulls has to go get an 
ace for this, but he has an eight in hand and that kind of finishes it all off. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Navi could have made it 9-5 and actually made their way back into this game. That's kind of part of why MR12 is so interesting because there really are no off rounds. But into the following round, this is something I also noticed that Navi do tend to be pretty stacked towards A very often on their anti, on, on their force buys. This is a shot Jail could have hit with an M4 and it might have changed the previous round. My God, that's a clean shot with the being. But Navi tend to have Alexi B kind of on an island on a lot of their force buys. And so going for a B exec, although risky, it can be a risk worth taking and it works out kind of perfectly, right? They catch Alexi B on his own, JL pivots over. That's not a shot you're probably expecting him to land all the time, right? Deagle just insta-giving someone in the air. That's that's not the easiest shot ever, but it's still a converted round for Furia against a force buy from Navi. And with three players alive, I think you're pretty happy with that. I would say this is a round that actually made me really satisfied with this win because there was the reality that it could have been 9-5 if, if they hadn't won that 3v4 on the B site. It could have been a closer game uh, to begin with, and how were their T-side gun rounds going to go, right? If they just kind of win a 1v4 to win this, then it's not going to feel all that satisfying that Navi, if they just hit better shots, they couldn't have won. However, I think this is really a really, really nice play. Now, this is an execute Furia ran almost an identical execute the last time they played Navi, because Bit basically never plays below balcony. The three main spots he's at, he's either jump spotting ticket, which is generally what you do if you're alone. He's on balcony in this exact angle, or he's close ramp. This seems to be the main three places that Bit is playing. And I think Furia know that, right? So their entire idea is we're going to throw smokes. The idea of this angle, by the way, is that you're holding a pretty decent angle here. Your teammates can throw smokes palace so that you don't have to worry about it too much. And then when they start fighting this direction from, from stairs, you can easily pivot to fight pe people that are looking the wrong direction. You can also get flashes over that helps support you can get flashes in towards apex or you can get flashes in towards fire that help support you so that you can peek out off of them it's actually just a really effective play but when there's no smoke down this is pretty much where bit is it seems like the majority of the time and I, I don't think that's actually that necessary of information but it does it does make it a little bit easier for them and then you're gonna have skulls throw this molly directly on top of balcony as they're swinging out so bit doesn't really have any opportunity to get a kill maybe if he hit a really nice shot he could have grabbed the kill but there's very little opportunity opportunity for him to find that kill and then you've got two players from Nabi swinging in looking to make contact but you have a player coming out of palace and four players all fighting together to try and deal with the player in top con area and this is actually a strat it's funny I remember that a very similar play on this strat from 20 15, 2016, you kind of force those players, you ask them a question. Are you going to play retake or are you going to fight for the bomb site? And it, it, in this like current way that CTs are playing, I feel like this is actually just a really smart strat because you smoke off here, smoke off here. And the, the CTs, by the way, they feel super genius playing around the side of the smoke right here, but it's, it's so common. This is a strat for, again, by the way, 2015, 2016, I think this is a strat that I first saw from Kaboom from Kaboom as in SKLG as in Fallen's team. Maybe that's a strat, maybe that strat is meta and I just haven't been seeing it recently, I haven't noticed it, but that is a really, really strong strat I feel like against the way that teams are playing recently. And you can see how it worked against Navi there. Obviously it requires you to hit your shots, but you're also 5v2 against players pushing through those smokes and you have your own utility that you're throwing to support yourself. It's not like completely random. And in this case, it almost looks like Alexi B1 there, but he doesn't have a kit, which means the game is over. Also, the quick switching is something that used to work in like 2005. They they patched that with, I think Z-Block pack, patched that in, in, in CS Source in like 2007 or something. Like that is such an old thing. I don't even think to do that anymore, despite me having played the game back when that was possible. It's kind of funny that Alexi B was doing that, but whatever. Anyways, really the craziest thing again, is that Furia was playing really fucking well.